Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is January 2nd, 2017. Boy, I can't believe I'm saying that. Oh. Yeah, Jeff, hold on just one second, Jeff. Hold on just one second. Good morning. This is uh, W. You threw me off, Jeff. <laughs> you, ru you ruined it all, Jeff. Now we can't do the interview. We can't do this at all. No, seriously. Uh, January 2nd, 2017. It's 9 a.m. And we're starting this is actually what 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 I'm doing right now is actually the idea of Dr. Carlos Rivera and uh I uh, you know when he when he came in and he brought me the idea I said you know because it's very rare that Dr. Carlos Rivera has a good idea where is he he's sitting out there does he hear me did you did you hear me say that Carlos anyway no seriously he had a really great idea and he calls it the small business shout out and the reason he's doing that is because he he's interacting in looking for sponsors for his his show and and just in general for the station um he came up with this concept of doing uh, small business shout outs and i i love it i really do because i love talking to business people i love talking to successful people you know but it's not just about the successes it's about the failures the mistakes the successes it's about everything that makes the person who they are today all right and jeffrey mark bloom uh with creative mediation Service. whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy crap. Things falling off the wall here, Jeff. Things are just falling off the wall. But anyway, it's going to be... You see, this is a great way to start out the morning and a great way to start out the day. Picture frames falling off the wall and everything like that. But maybe that's a sign, huh? Maybe it's a sign. But anyway, so I have uh, Jeffrey Mark Bloom on a creative... A creative med, med, uh, Jeff, tell him the name of your business, if you would, please. Creative Resolutions Group. There you go. And you are a mediator. Yes, I am. Okay, so let's start off the conversation by letting everybody know what exactly does a mediator do? What I do is uh, mediation um, and or arbitration is considered alternative dispute resolution. And it gives people an opportunity to resolve issues without going through the cost and the time and the insanity of the litigation process. Don't people have to use a court? Do, do, do people have to use? Don't people have to go to court in order to be able to resolve a, to come to a resolution with something with regards to conflict, or can they just go to a mediator? Absolutely not. Um, in fact, um, you know, look, nothing's ever one hundred percent right. So not all cases are fit for mediation, nor are they all fit for litigation. And what I always tell people is, you know, get educated, know what all your options are before you decide what to do. Um, I've ran into so many people over the years, uh, and Eric, you have too, uh, when she started promoting mediation, of people saying they didn't even know it existed or that it was an option. And where, you know, where were you five, ten years ago uh, when we spent all our money? Um, it, it's just, you know, again, uh, litigation is just a, it's a very tough way to go, although <clears throat> it's valuable in certain cases, and sometimes you have to. But... Um, Mediation, arbitration is so much easier and more of a chance of getting a win-win result rather than a win-lose or a lose-lose result. Now, from what I understand from your biography, you have, you, are, you have your law degree. Yes, I have my executive juris doctorate from Concord Law School uh, through Capital University. And I also have a master's degree in negotiation dispute resolution from Creighton University. Really? That's... that's... That's something really good to have on the resume. I tell you right there, right there. So if I was having a problem, be it in business or in personal life, and I decided that I wanted to go to, and normally people go, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to take you to court and I'm going to sue you. And you go down and you, you find an attorney and you pay the attorney the retainer and the attorney gets a date for court and then you go into court and it, it drags on and on and on and on forever. It seems like that way. I mean, I know, I know of court cases and court battles right now where you talk to people. Not only has it lasted years, I mean, you know, you would think that people would say, oh, I've been going to battle court for two years, but I've heard people that have been in court house, courtroom for five, six, seven, eight, nine years. That's ridiculous. What is the time frame? Yep. What's, what's the difference in the time frame between me t saying I'm going to sue someone and taking them to court or me saying to someone, listen, why don't we agree on getting a mediator? What would be the time frame difference to a, a, to, to a resolve, to something ending this whole I'm going to sue you well, thing? Well, it depends on the type of case. Well, let's just use family and divorce for an example um, because that's the, um, 
the nor you know, I don't want to say the norm, but that's the, the bulk of my practice. A lot of done mediated other types of cases. So usually what'll happen is one of the parties will contact me and uh either the wife or the husband and they you know, they're they're ready to move forward. Either they want to get divorced or separation. And what I offer them is to I take as little information on the initial phone call as possible because I'm the neutral third person in the room, right? So I don't want to hear uh, what he did, what she did, it's, it, it makes it very difficult. Right. So I would also, in the same token, and I'll get to this in a second, people have asked me, well, can I just come in by, by myself for the first consultation? And I'll explain why that doesn't work also. And what I do is I act as a neutral third party. I'll give them, I offer a free in-office uh, consultation for the couple to come in and speak with me and ask any questions they want to see if we're a fit and to see if I can help them. And then from there, you know, we start the sessions either on the following uh, future dates, very, very rarely, but sometimes a couple say, well, we want to start now. Uh, so we'll do that. Not a problem. But um, from soup to nuts, assuming they come regularly, you know, once a week, once every two weeks, um, the paperwork can be filed with the court, I would say, within three, three months or less from the time we start the process. And then once it's filed with the court, anywhere from four to six months time range for the judge to sign off on the, and they're done. How long have so you been? So in, less than, in less than eight months total from the time you start, you could be done and divorced. There you go. Now, it's not just about divorce. You do other types of conflict resolution with regards to other things. But, I mean, divorce, of course. You know, the thing about divorce, it's a great way if you and your soon-to-be ex-spouse can agree on certain things and you want to save time and money, uh, mediation is the way to go. But you guys, you can do something with regards to mediation for other situations as well, correct? Correct. I've done some contract disputes, some landlord-tenant cases. Uh, I, I, I branched out into, a few years ago, the landlord-tenant realm because it was a, it's a very big um, issue out there. Yeah, I can imagine. And yeah. my idea behind it, and, and you and I had discussed this before, is that... You know, you're you're a, you're a landlord, and now you've got tenants that don't uh, that don't pay, I and mean, they're behind whatever amount of, of months they are. You know, they got to get an attorney, they got to get served, they go to court, they don't show up. You know, they're living in they're living in this apartment for who knows how long, right? Six, eight months, a year before you could possibly even get them out, right? And even then, uh, there's issues with you know people leaving in the middle of the night, you know, trashing the apartment. Then you got to pay for repairs. And now you've done all that, and now you've got an empty apartment, right, for however amount of time it takes to fill it but when there's no income coming in, plus all the time that they weren't paying, right? Now, again, uh, this might not be every case because it depends on the reason. But let's just say, for example, that, uh, Eric, you, you know, you're a landlord, and you have tenants that have been there for, I don't know, let's say two or three years. They've always paid their rent on time, but the last four months they haven't, um, maybe uh, Bill lost his job, maybe uh, one of the children became ill, a medical thing, you know, whatever the case may be. So now you've got, uh, you know, three, four months in arrears, and rather than start the litigation process of paying the attorney and going through aggravation, what, what if you were to sit down in a mediation? First of all, why not have a mediation clause in your lease so that if there are any disputes, both sides agree to go to that first before they go to court? And that's for everything, rather, other than rent, you know, maybe there are repairs that need to be done. Maybe there are issues between the parties. Why not agree to do that totally to resolve any issues? So, so you come into the room with the mediator, and, you know, Mary and, and John are, are behind, you know, four months in their rent, and the rent is you know, $1,000 a month, and they owe $4,000. And you as a landlord are trying to or want to get eviction proceedings because, you know, they're living there for free. It's... it's uh, just not, just not working out for you as a landlord. You have expenses also. And then John and Mary say, well, look, um, I don't know, uh, Mary was in the hospital. You know, she was very ill. The kids, the kids were in a car accident. I lost my job, whatever the case may be. But can we do this? You know, can we agree to, uh, so the rent's $1,000 a month over the next six months or whatever, however many it takes to get the arrears done, we'll pay $1,500 a month. So it's a thousand towards the current rent, five hundred towards the arrears until all's paid up, and then 
and the landlord says, great, you know, that'll work. Uh, so there's a good faith effort on both sides. They actually sign a binding agreement. <clears throat> now, if the tenants breach that agreement, it's a lot easier for them to go into court and, and get them out quicker because they present this as, judge. look, judge, we tried mediation. Here's what we agreed to. And, you know, they started out and they paid one or two months. And they haven't done it since. And, and I, you know, I need to get them out of here. Uh, they, I, the landlord has a better chance in that case of getting the process quicker done and get them out of there than they would if they were going through the normal process. And the opportunity, obviously, to help resolve it and, and get caught up on the rent without, without having to go through all that process of getting new tenants and fixing up the apartment, et cetera. Gotcha. I gotcha. Now, you also train. Um, you also do training for mediators. So, in other words, if somebody decided sure. they wanted to get involved and start a whole new career as a mediator, they could do it, and you actually train these people, correct? Correct. I have two training courses. I have a five-day, 40-hour course, and I have a three-day, 24-hour course. My three-day course is coming up on January 27th, 28th, and 29th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and that's going to be in either Uniondale or my Westbury office, one of my two locations. And it's a good way, you know, if somebody wants to add mediation to their current practice, if they want to be a mediator and, you know, hang their own shingle and, and or, you know, or do it part-time and, and help people resolve issues. There are people out there who like helping people. Uh, it's something they enjoy doing. And to have a, a training course with some, you know, basic negotiation skills and, and getting to the underlying issues and why people argue. And it's a, it's a good course to take, uh, very reasonable, and I, I offer that as well. Very good. Now, something that you're doing right now, which I find very exciting, is you are offering uh, with Monica Bennett a um, mastermind group, which is going to begin really, really soon here, with regards to a focus on Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Um, tell us about that, if you would, Jeff. Correct. Well, j- just to, as a preamble to that, uh, it seemed like a natural transition as I was building and working my mediation practice and helping people and teaching them how to communicate and, and, and those type of things that coaching and leadership training was, was right along the same lines. And I got certified with the uh, John Maxwell team as a uh, coach, trainer, speaker, and I've also studied under, and still do, Jack Canfield, Tony Robbins, Darren Hardy, uh, Bob Proctor. And, and these are just the type of skills that, you know, to help people deal with these type of things and move on. So the Think and Grow Rich, I've, I've done that once a year uh, for the last three years, and usually the beginning of the year, of January. And Monica and I are offering the same thing to, to people. Uh, it's an eight-week study via phone conference slash webinar on Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. It's New Year, people want to set goals, but again, it's it's not about, you know, you can set goals, but, but what do you do with them? You know, you write them on a piece of paper, you put it away, and you don't see it again until next year, right? So, in order to get results, it takes action to do that. So we're doing an eight-week study, starts tomorrow morning, by the way, um, and it's running from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. on Tuesday morning, for eight weeks. You can do it from the comfort of your home before your workday starts or in your office if you're in that or at least you don't have to go anywhere. And it's a comprehensive uh, study of the book. We won't be covering every single chapter, but we'll be gearing it towards the needs of the participants and what their their goals are and cover some pertinent information. And it's really be very valuable. I mean, you can't beat $97 for an eight-week program. We normally charge $197 $197 for the same program. But Monica and I decided we're going to add value, uh, you know, help people out start the new year and and have something that they, they, they can build upon. That's great. That really is great. I, you know, the book Think It Grow Rich has been around for so long. It's one of the top best-selling books as far as business goes. Any major, any successful entrepreneur or successful business person, when you ask them uh, what books are in their library, uh I always get the answer, Think and Grow Rich, you know, either that or, you know, the original Wallace Waddles book. But uh, Think and Grow Rich, it's a, you know, and the, the call it a mindset is, is a great thing. And uh, it's a great way to start out the new year. And tell them if they want to get a hold of you, 
because I know this is starting tomorrow morning, and I know it's it's booked up. But if they want to get a hold of you to see if there's any more room, how will they do that? What's the best way to contact you, Jeff? Yeah, we do have a few slots left open. Uh, the you can go to my website to register directly at mymediationservices.com forward slash events, or you can call me at five one six three zero eight seven eight zero eight. And by the way, Eric, just so the listeners know that this study includes a free PDF download of the book, Very which good. we provided. Very good. So there's no excuse. You know, uh, procrastination doesn't work, right? You know what I was saying? Something you and I had had a conversation before, and we talked about excuses. And, you know, one thing I I decided the way I'm I'm starting off the new year is there's a difference between a reason and an excuse. And some people will right. try to use a, you know, and the thing is we have to define is it a real reason? Or is it an excuse? And I refuse to. Uh, I I will not give excuses this year for anything. You know, if I if I have a, se- a situation and there's a reason because of it, then I will find. A, you know, if it's a good or bad, I will find a solution to whatever I need to find. But I will not offer excuses any longer. That that's one of my resolutions for this year. So for all of you out there, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, what are you going to say, Jeff? Go ahead. Uh, say, Eric, what do you? If you were to pick, uh, and I'll share mine with you also. If you were to pick one word that uh, is going to be your resolution for the new year, you have to do it in one word, what would it be? No. <laughs> <laughs> Learning to say no. <laughs> you know? Okay. No, because you know what it is. Um, go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I tend to um, – sometimes I, 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 I say yes too often. You know what I'm saying? And that – it's a bad thing in a way. I mean, it's a good thing because I'm saying yes, but it's a it's a bad thing in a way because you, I'm scheduling myself more, and I'm and I'm saying rather than trying to take on too much and please everyone, you know, I'm going to be honest with everyone and say, hey, listen, I can't do that right now. You know, it might take me a few days, it might take me a month, it might take me a year. I can't do it at all. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing, because uh, less the less stress you put on yourself the more productive you can be to who you want to be productive for. So that's what I'm doing. And it's all about, you know, setting priorities too. You know, for example, time management is a myth. You can't manage time. Um, once, it's, once it's gone, it's gone. But it's, it's setting priorities and getting things done that way and delegating and thinking, thinking along those lines. So uh, my word for 2017 is focus. Because similar to what you were saying, you know, sometimes I find myself, you know, all over the place, and uh, you know, you got to, you know, you own your own business, so it's a little more pressure, right? You, right. You know, you own a, you're part owner of a radio station, uh, so your success is based on what you do. Right. And one of the things that I run into, and, and you know, you can share if that's the same thing with you, is that an idea will come to you, or somebody will will uh, approach you with something, and you're like, oh, should I do that? I don't know. What if it doesn't? What if it works? You know that. that this could be the result. And sometimes you find yourself signing up for things and doing things that don't work. But you also learn by running your own business that sometimes you don't know exactly what's working. Right. And sometimes it takes months to even come to fruition. So it's a, it's a, usually it's a combination of three or four or five things that are working for you rather than just one. Absolutely. Those of you that uh, – Jeff also has a show on WLIY. He does it on Monday nights uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, it's called the Jeffrey Bloom Show, Ask the Mediator. It's a great show because, um, first off, the guests that he have, has had on and will have on are, are amazing people. And in addition to that, uh, you can actually call up and talk to him with regards to – questions with regards to potential mediation situations. So that's a good thing. So Jeff is, as far as I'm concerned, if you look up mediator, all right, not meteor, mediator, all right, and uh, in the dictionary you'll see Jeff's picture there because he truly is the mediator. So Jeff, I want to thank you so much. Once again, give me your website if you could, please. Website is mymediationservices.com. You can also call for free office consultation at 516 516- 308 And real quick, Eric, if I could just very quick mention, I'll be talking a little bit about my show tonight. Sure. Um, opening up my third office location in the Bronx on East Tremont Road. Um, I'm teaming up with somebody there, and I'll be talking about a little bit on my show tonight, and he may be on either tonight or next week uh, talking about what we're going to be doing and moving forward and helping people um, 
in that location. Very good. Jeffrey Mark Bloom, everybody. All right. So, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me. We appreciate you. Have a you know happy new year to you. And uh, I guess I'll see you tonight. <laughs> yep. All right. Thanks, Harry. Very good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.